Happy New Year, book Happy two. Happy New Year. From Peg and Martine. You said to chime in. I did. <laughs> um, back at the History Shelf in 2021. Welcome back. Uh, it's great to be here, everybody. I hope you've had a wonderful New Year celebration and uh, you're safe and healthy. Uh, props and thanks to Martine for this awesome new microphone, which I'm hoping will uh, increase the quality of my, my broadcasts. Yeah, we'll filter it so you sound like James Earl Jones. It'll be Ooh, great. that would be great. It won't be terrifying at all. Yes. Um, wow, we've got a lot to get to. Also, I want to give thanks to Martine for really encouraging me to make this video. Uh, <laughs> I've been kind of slothful uh, over my vacation, my Christmas break, so I apologize for the the lack of videos, but not too slothful. I have actually been reading a lot and getting a lot of work done. So she says. Yeah. So, um, but I've been reading like at a, at a marathon pace to finish some uh, some book reviews, and I am going to be, uh, as soon as... As soon as I have a moment where I can do those, just because they're very focused. <laughs> That's your, 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 your so diplomatic way of, as soon as you're... As soon as Martine room, might be... As soon as you turf off. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, because those I have to really be able to concentrate. Anyway, I have about three of those I want to do, and I'm hoping to get those done this weekend and post it. Um, they're, you know, since they are books I've read in 2020, and I'd like to just get those off the, um, you know get those out there for you. Um, all very good books, thought very thought provoking. Um, what else? Um, had a great Christmas, didn't we? We had a nice Christmas. Um, it's going to be a very busy year. We are in the process now of really getting ready to uh, sell this place and look for our uh, first uh, house together. And not a townhome where we don't hear people flushing their toilets and everything else is driving us bonkers. And we'll have space for our own separate um, offices <laughs> because I work from home and so does Martine and we, we, we need our own working space. And I'm excited for wh wherever we end up that I'm going to have a really, my goal is to have a really nice YouTube channel podcasting setup and look at this, you know, she's ready to go with this awesome new I got an extension here. I've got this wicked new uh, Microphone here um, I don't know the the possibilities are endless um, You know, I'm sure that I'll still have some type of bookish background wherever my uh, my new podcasting um, location will be YouTube casting whatever you call this. What's that? I think that's going to be hard to avoid. Yeah. 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 All right. Yeah. The books are going to be hard to avoid. Here's the other thing that's hard to avoid right now is that the books that I've just bought recently in the last couple of months, um, I'm realizing there's no point in unboxing them <laughs> and trying to find space for them because I'm at the point now where I want to start boxing up books I currently have on my shelves and start getting things out into the garage because it's, you know, I'm really ready to leave and find new uh, new lodgings, new a new dwelling space, as is Martine and the pups. So anyway, I know that was a four minute digression. I just wanted to give you an update on what's going on in our lives. Um, for those of you who care, thank you. Lo you know, love right back at you. Um, I do want to show off. <laughs> Probably the most surprising Christmas gift I got, but probably by far one of the best, uh, is this shirt that Martine got for me because, you know, <laughs> the world is yours, baby. And everything in it. All right. That's a line some from people, Scarface. Some people quote Godfather or aliens. I'm, I'm partial to um, quoting aliens. You quote Scarface. I quote Scarface, the, the, um, epically bad but so good movie from the 80s uh, with Al Pacino. Um, Scarface is my dude. I know he's a horrible man but yet this movie it's off the hook. Anyway oh, and for, oh I, yes I do a great impression of Fredo from The Godfather apparently. 
Um, <laughs> maybe someday, kids. Maybe someday I can, I can do it on this channel, and uh, we'll see. Maybe with this microphone, I'll feel uh, pretty brave. Yeah. When something's going wrong, you'll just break I'll out. I'll break out into the Fredo uh, meltdown yeah. Yeah. with Michael in the boathouse. Yeah. For you fans, you know exactly what I'm talking about. Okay, so um, this video, what I'm going to do, uh, this one's going to be a, I'm just going to give you an update on what I'll be reading. I've been seeing a lot of great booktube videos out there um, uh, with uh, like 2021 TBR lists or things that people you know goals for next year's or this year's reading um and i i want to join in but i want to do it with a caveat that i can only go by quarter <laughs> i have no way of telling you what 12 books i want to read for or 20 books i want to read in 2021 um i have to go by the like first quarter only and then i'll you know make a second quarter one uh later on uh, I know Bill Rutenberg, I really enjoyed his video he just put up either, oh, I think early this morning or, I, well, he's got some great videos up and uh, he's got a really cool list of books he wants to tackle in 2021. And um, I think he forgot one though, because we are doing a buddy read starting today. I'm really uh, looking forward to hearing how oh, that goes. Yes, Martine is, she really is excited that Bill and I are going to be doing a buddy read because he's a history teacher and I am a history student as it were I uh, lifetime student of history so uh, yeah I'm excited about that too and uh, we are reading and actually so that's one of the books I wanted to show you for the first quarter oh um, yeah where is it it's the new HW Brands book and we're both very excited to be reading it um, it's the Zealot and the Emancipator, um, John Brown, Abraham Lincoln, and the Struggle for American Freedom. Uh, as you can see, I've already got my bookmark in it, ready to go. Um, it's about 400 pages. You know, obviously, it's about um, John Brown and Abraham Lincoln and uh, just how emancipation evolved. Um, and, and definitely, they're two di very different approaches uh, to it. So... Um, we're probably going to have to read about 100 pages a week if we want to stay on track to finish this month. But, uh, Bill, I'm looking forward to reading this with you. So this is going to be um, one of the first books I'm going to tackle in um, the first quarter of 2021. And, you know, I'm very hopeful that I can still stay on track with all my reading goals um, and buddy reads and, re and read-alongs. And I just forgot two more things that I needed to show I might pause real quick just to grab those books, but uh, let's just continue on, and then I'll get to those that are just off of the out of camera range here. Oh, um, and your I will show them the candle as well. Um, okay, don't let me forget, but let me stick to the books right now. Okay, <sighs> I feel like I've been out of practice. Uh, let me take a sip of Pepsi Zero. I had a little bit of a coughing fit earlier. And it was a deep cough, so I got a. <laughs> Martine got that deer yeah. in headlights look at me like, oh my god, and I'm like, I. I don't know where I would have picked up anything, but. Yeah, yeah, you you were like, no, I'm fine, I'm fine. I just, I just, it was really deep. Like you went from like, oh, I just coughed. Like, you know, <laughs> to, I'm fine, and then you're like, no, it's like like really deep, like when you have bronchitis, and I'm just. That was like, yeah. Oh my god. Dude. <laughs> well, I haven't that. coughed like that in a while, where you know it takes you all the way down to the to your your bronchial okay, tubes. Just stop, stop talking. Anyway, but it's feeling better now. I, she was working earlier. She's putting new handles on our cabinets and stuff you know we've got 30 days is our goal to to make some uh, minor improvements around here and uh, so i think there's just a lot of dust in the air she was sanding so i'm pretty sure i'm okay but let's check back in a couple days guys and i'll let you know <laughs> okay so the zealot and the emancipator is the first book of the the quarter first quarter 2021 um this book i began in december but i'm gonna finish it this month and I am just riveted by it, and it's written so well. This is Soviet Judgment at Nuremberg, a new history of the International Military Tri Tribunal after World War II by Francine Hirsch. It's put out by Oxford. 
Um, and uh, I'd like to do a review for it on this channel when I'm done. That's my goal. Um, but I am zipping along uh, about about that far into it. But um, it's it's fascinating. Um, just hearing how the Soviets were trying, you know, how, how the whole trial came to be, and how the Americans really took charge and kind of just kind of you know steamrolled everyone in their path. Uh, Robert Jackson was the lead prosecutor, um, and for the Americans. And uh, it, it talks about, you know, a lot about, um, oh, how the, the, uh, the Soviets were reacting to him, also trying to avoid certain subjects that would, you know, making sure that the defendants weren't going to push back uh, to indicate that, you know, the allies weren't so um, unbesmirched in areas of, um, you know, as far as the the crimes that they were being tried for, like crimes, uh, crimes of, crimes against peace, uh, crimes against humanity, of course. But um, one of the, because they were they were indicted on four major counts, and um, a count of conspiracy, a count of uh, uh, crime of ag aggressive war, which was actually first coined, I think, by the by um, the Soviets, which was not really known at the time. Anyway, I'm learning a whole bunch. It's a fantastic book. Um, and so I'm deep into that as, you know, as well, but that's, that'll, that'll be finished by the end of this month. Um, let's see. Okay, so this is a book that is not out for sale yet. I have been commissioned to write a book review for it, for, uh, the book, the book browse review. I'm sure you've heard me mention them before. Um, this is coming out in February. Um, so... I've got an advanced copy, but I will be writing a review um, of this book, The Spy Master of Baghdad, A True Story of Bravery, Family, and Patriotism in the Battle Against ISIS by Margaret Coker. Um, and this is, this is coming out from uh, Day Street Publishing. It's an imprint of William uh, Morrow. Um, so I'll, I'll just read you a quick overview of this. Uh, the spy master of Baghdad tells a dramatic yet intimate account of how a covert Iraqi intelligence unit called the Falcons came together against all odds to defeat ISIS. The Falcons, comprised of ordinary men with little conventional espionage background, infiltrated the world's most powerful terrorist organization, ultimately turning the tide of war against the terrorist group and bringing safety to millions of Iraqis and the broader world. Centered on the relationship between two brothers, Harith al-Sudani, a rudderless college dropout who was recruited to the Falcons by his all-star younger brother Munaf and their eponymous unit commander Abu Ali. Uh, the spy master of Baghdad follows their emotional journey as Harith volunteers for the most dangerous mission imaginable. Uh, with piercing lyricism and thrilling prose, Coker's deeply reported account interweaves heartfelt portraits of these and other unforgettable characters as they navigate the streets of war-torn Baghdad and perform heroic feats of cunning and courage. Um, it goes on, but basically that, it's right up my alley. Um, I, I think I, I reviewed a book for Open Letters last year. It was also like a reportage type of, uh, oh, I can't, can't quite remember the name of it, but it, uh, it centers along, along similar things and, uh, just the battle in ISIS, or but the battle in Iraq against ISIS, and um, boy, the war reporting stuff really gets my blood going. I really enjoy those type of reads. So this one will be coming out in February. Again, this is just a uh, advanced reading copy, but um, I have to write this by February 15th. So obviously this will be a first quarter read for moi. Um, let me, running out of room here. That's the other thing. I hope to have a nice, big, wide table, like a big, uh, longer desk for my um, YouTube channel where I can really line things up. I'm going to be really, you know, uh, intentional about how I design my uh, my work and uh, YouTubing space. You know, I won't have, like, egg crates on the, eggshell crates on the wall, right? That's the sound batting stuff, the sound. Yeah, yeah. I'm not going to do that. No. But... You'll have an on-air sign. I'll have a, oh, an on-air. That's so cute. That'd be cute. Yeah. That'd be cute. 
Um, just watch the dogs ignore it as they see. Yes. <laughs> Um, all right, so I'm going to get into things I'll be reading along with other people in addition to The Zealot and The Emancipator. Let me grab two books. I'll be right back. And I'm back. All right, so the other two books that um, I've... Three books, actually. Wow. <laughs> well, one of them is going to be in a, a year-long project with um, Kim, Kim Becker from Middle of the Book March, um, Book Rook. I, I don't think Book Rook has a channel, but um, but uh, there's a lot of you out there that don't have channels, but um, do read-alongs, um, and uh, you know I've talked with you guys before, and I was invited to do a. I know there was a lot of the Wolf Hall last year that people uh, were on the bandwagon for, and I wanted to, but I just couldn't get around to doing it. So they are doing along with Siriella, Albert Siriella. Um, um, Kim, Middle of the Book March, and Book Rook, and let me know if I'm forgetting anyone, you, uh, ladies, please, if anyone else has joined, let me know, but uh, we, we're going to be looking at reading all year long the Hilary Mantel trilogy, uh, the Wolf Hall trilogy, and, and, and in addition, the, um, the biography of Thomas Cromwell, I believe by, what's, uh, honey, how do you pronounce this, Dermot? Dermot? Dermot, Dermot McCulloch. Yeah, Dermot. Dermot. Thank you. It's my Spoiler native. Alert. It my, doesn't end well. Yeah, it doesn't. She's my native Irish speaker, so she can help me with pronunciations for all that. Oh, look, it matches my shirt almost. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> um, so I will be starting Wolf Hall. I'm not sure we haven't. I haven't had any updates from that group, but I'm assuming we're gonna going to start reading starting with Wolf Hall sometime in January. Um, so I'm guessing that'll be like the, my first quarter read. So I'm excited because I, I feel like I've missed out on the, the whole zeitgeist of that when, while, you know, whilst it was going on. But uh, hey, better late than never, right? Um, and maybe in February, uh, I'm waiting to hear back from Patrice, Patrice Jones. I'm sure a lot of you know her. She's a great um, legendary uh, buddy reader. Uh, she does a lot of buddy reads and uh, I've read with her before and she's a lovely uh, lovely lady I love just reading with her and we had committed last year sometime to reading Frederick Douglass and we're we're gonna be getting around to that uh, probably hopefully in February so we will be tackling Frederick Douglass Prophet of Freedom by David W Blight um, as you know, this book uh, is a huge buzz around it. It is a it's a chunkster, um, but just can't wait to read it. Whether it's going to be good stuff. Um, Kara Middleton, hi Kara. Hey Kara. See, yeah, Martine says hey. Um, hope you're doing you're doing well out there, and uh, we are going to try to do um, a buddy read. We we talk a lot on. Um, she doesn't have a channel, but we have a. We talk on Boxer, and um, yeah, she's uh, she's a big Russo file like me, reading everything about Russia, um, mostly nonfiction. But she she reads a lot of like Russian, you know, historical fiction as well. But um, we wanted to start tackling. Help me out here, Kara. It was uh, I think winners of the Pushkin. Uh, the Pushkin Prize, I think that was it, although he wrote fiction. Anyway, we were going to give ourselves a little project, you know, of uh, reading the best of the best on Russian history and things like that. Anyway, Anne Applebaum, of course, comes up, and uh, we decided we're going to try to read this together. And I already had the book, and I haven't read it yet, so it's, it sits on the shelf behind me here on camera. But we're going to read Iron Curtain. The Crushing of Eastern Europe. Isn't that happy? 1944 to 1956. Um, so this is one of her fantastic studies. Uh, so that's on tap, and I'm guessing that will take us most of the first quarter, um, just because everything going on. <laughs> but I'm going to try to keep up with everything. So, okay, and then, okay, two more things. And one of them I'm really excited about as well. Uh, well, here's historical fiction that I will be reading um, 
it, to also be writing a review for this time for historical novels review um, magazine which comes out every quarter but this is a brand new book um, let's see this is due this review is due on March 15th but this is part of a series but apparently you can read these as standalones and it's it's a okay this is the new book by um, or in the series um, the Thomas Kidd uh, series uh, Balkan Glory by Julian Stocklin. It's a Thomas Kidd novel. Uh, I volunteered for this one because it just looked like right up my alley. I love some some good you know uh, nautical battles and things like that and I think this is set in the time of 1811. Uh, the Adriatic Known as, known as the French Lake, is now the most valuable territory Napoleon Bonaparte possesses. Captain Sir Thomas Kidd finds his glorious return to England cut short when the Admiralty summons him to lead a squadron of frigates into these waters to cause havoc and distress to the enemy. Um, and then it goes into a bunch of different things. This is the 23rd novel in the series, so uh, I mean, I know I'm, I'm going to be missing a lot of recurring characters. I won't know who they are, but you know what? If I really enjoy it, you know, I can always go back to the beginning. Um, but they do say you can read these as standalone novels. So this is Balkan Glory um, by Julian Stockwin. Uh, this is put out by the, this is the UK imprint, Hodder and Stoughton. Anyway, so I need to read this and write a review on this before March 15th. So as you can see, these are all first quarter and they're all big books. <laughs> they are all super fat. You know what? We'll be moving and, and you'll, <clears throat> you will, uh, you'll be doing your podcast in a closet with like a little, you know, like torch or flashlight above your head going, I've only got two minutes to tell you about the three pages I've been able to read in the last <laughs> six months. <laughs> yes, I will. Um, I'll also be in there with a, a gallon of ice cream. Yeah, I'll, be, I'll be eating my pain <laughs> through this move. You'll have the dogs like bum rushing the door through it. Yes, yeah. yes. So, all right, so the last book <laughs> is also a big book, but I'm excited. Um, I guess, you know, it's not really a, uh, this is a, a not an official announcement video just because I'm talking about all the, all the other books I'll be reading, but I'll just say it and I'll announce it here that I will be joining the um, Brothers Karamazov 2021 read along uh, that Christy Lewis, Dostoevsky in Space, and Una at the Codex Cantina uh, are co hosting in February and March. And, um, and I have my copy here. I will be tackling this along with Christy, um, Una, I think Victoria. Um, gosh, I know there's a couple others in our group. Um, and I think we're actually, I think, and I, I saw it in the, um, Una and Crypto's uh, recent podcast where they were talking about their projects for 2021, that, uh, they're, you know, they're asking people if they want to get involved. So there might, there could be more joining us. I don't know. But anyway, uh, we're going to be reading along in February and March. And we will have a series of live streams um, to talk about the parts as we go along. So I might try to start getting start getting uh, going on this sometime in January, just so I can stay uh, ahead of the game, as it were. Um, but I think we'll have a our first intro live stream on January 28th. But I will be part of that, so it'll be exciting. I'll be um, on air for a couple hours with some really cool people and uh, I just I'm really looking forward to exploring this I, in fact I'm embarrassed to say I have not read this book um, I've read more I've read Dostoevsky's shorter works and I've read Tolstoy's shorter works I have not tackled the big novels yet and it's embarrassing because I'm such a huge um, Russian history fanatic that I just haven't strayed into the realm of the classic literature yet ex except for the shorter pieces so I'm really this is really overdue and I'm really excited to be doing this with some really cool smart uh, readers out there so 
This is scheduled for February and March. Brothers Karamazov. So, yay. How about them apples? What do you think, hon? Can I do it? We'll find out. It could, it could be really wintry here, and uh, you'll be like, uh, could be. this is, could this be is really my wintry. right here. It could be. Yeah. Yeah, it could be. If, if, if it's, if it's springtime no, there's no way. Mm-mm. No. No. So these are the type of books you should read when, although, you know, Denver weather and Colorado weather lately has been really disappointing me in the sense that it's January and it's... There's days where it's 60 degrees yeah, and it's sunny, I, we've got like and three there's inches of ice outside. Nope. Well, that's because the sun doesn't shine on that side of the house. Yes. Anyway, um, <laughs> you know, you kind of want to have a blizzard now and then. Um, but we've lately, a pandemic. Well, we <laughs> don't, don't want this pandemic anymore. I just want to go. Oh, let me show you what else I got for Christmas from Santa Mart Martin. See this? Book club, right? You're like, what What the heck could this be? It's a candle. <laughs> Book club scented candle. Homesick. It's that's, homesick. That, that's, it's, the, that's the company's The homesick. company's name is Homesick. And I don't know if you can see, there's two behind me on the shelves. Um, we're waiting on one that is uh, they make sense that apparently you can smell like certain things like this says book club and it's delicious it's uh, hints of um, it says here curl up with the perfect rainy day read okay um, notes of warm nutmeg amber and sandalwood fill the room as you turn each page Ooh -wee. Um, yeah homesick.com we create authentic hand poured products that celebrate the people places and moments that matter most so Apparently they have a whole line of stuff, and she got one for Oregon, which is where she is from. Um, most recently. Most recently, and she's from Ireland, but you know she lived. You live. You, you'd call Oregon your the, your longest resident. I mean, oh yeah, big town. But you went to college in. Um, Lewis and Clark. Yep. Lewis and Clark, but then you went to George Washington, GW. Yeah. Okay, so she's been around, but she calls it, you know, Oregon, really the place where she hails from in America. Um, and then she ordered one for Colorado, which is on back order, right? Or something like that. Well, uh, they're going to tell me when it's back in. And yeah, and then they'll, we'll find out soon. And then another one called New Home, <laughs> which makes sense because we're, you know, obviously we are searching for a new home and it's have that new home scent. So anyway, th those are some pretty cool items. We got, you know, and I got the Scarface shirt, which I love. I can't wait to, I would like to get some more Scarface <laughs> I, apparel. I, listen, I, I want to get, actually, I have a, a really uh, horrible looking uh, painting of Pacino. Well, no, it was it actually I well, I have some Pacino artwork in the garage. And that friend's got me as a joke, but then I was like, no, this is awesome. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I'm keeping yeah, this. You gotta, they, they were initially, jokes. And then you're like, it needs a new frame. It did. It, it needs a new matting it's, it's, and I, a new I frame. I actually came across it when I was outside. Oh, I'm keeping it. Yeah. Um, maybe I'll show that sometime. Okay, guys. So that's what I'm reading for the first quarter. It's It's a lot. I mean... Oh my god, this is not even all of it, and I don't think I can lift all of them. They're so heavy. Whoa. I'll try to take a thumbnail picture. That's just some of them, right? Okay. God, I don't know, guys. <laughs> I'll do my best, Psych but... Psyching yourself out. You'll have a good time. Yeah, I'm psyching myself out. And then these three on top. <laughs> Holy crap, Noli. I'll do it. Wow. Look how... T they're like touching the base of the uh, microphone right here <laughs> that's a lot of first quarter reading kids um we'll see we'll see how we can we'll see how we do you know anyway i'm going to run along i'm gonna try to make another quick video for this evening and the next video will be on historical fiction things i've read recently and um Kind of a, I'm going to include a, a recent history fiction haul as well. So come back for that one. 
and I will talk to you guys soon. Take care and Happy New Year. Happy New Year, guys. See you later. Bye.